Here's another problem. This angle is 23 degrees. This is a right triangle. And the length of this side is 0.6. The length of this side is 0.6. Please pause the video and try to figure out everything else that you can about this triangle. can use asterisks to indicate the information we were originally given. This angle is 90, so we know the other two angles also have to add up to 90. That means that this angle, which we were not given, must be 90 minus 23. 90 minus 23 is 67. But I'm going to continue to focus on the angle that I was originally given, so I'm going to leave the asterisk over here. Okay, now let's make a plan. Well, I guess our first step is to label the sides. We know that this side is the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle. Now, this side that's vertical is the adjacent side because it's adjacent to the asterisk. And this side is the opposite side because it's opposite to the asterisk. Of course, if we had decided to focus on the 67 degree angle, the opposite and adjacent sides would flip. That's why it's so important to use an asterisk to remind yourself which angle you're focusing on. Alright, now we can make our plan. Which trig functions are going to be helpful to us? Well, remember that our plan is to use the information we were given about the hypotenuse. We were given this number 0.6 about the hypotenuse, so it makes sense to use trig functions that mention the hypotenuse, like the sine and the cosine. But the tangent is not going to be nearly as helpful because the tangent never even talks about the hypotenuse. How are we going to get a chance to use this 0.6 number about the hypotenuse if the tangent never even talks about the hypotenuse? So we're not planning to use this function. So we can use these asterisks to indicate the functions that we're planning to use to figure out the other sides of the triangle. We can start with either the sine or the cosine, but I feel like starting with the cosine. Cosine 23 equals the adjacent side over hypotenuse. Now we don't know how long the adjacent side is, but we do know how long the hypotenuse is. 0.6. Now we can use cross multiplication. 1 times the adjacent is just the adjacent side. And then we also have 0.6 times the cosine of 23. If you're given the hypotenuse, then you can figure out the adjacent side as the hypotenuse times the cosine. Uh, remember that um, now we're doing a problem that's more kind of standard. Um, the standard type of problem in physics is when you're told the hypotenuse and you have to figure out the adjacent and the opposite sides. If you're told the hypotenuse and you have to figure out the adjacent and the opposite sides, you can use cosine to figure out the adjacent side and you can use sine to figure out the opposite sides. Um, the adjacent side is just the hypotenuse times the cosine. And we'll see in a second that the opposite side is just the hypotenuse times the sine. So if you're comfortable with this type of problem, you might just skip these two steps and go straight to here. Uh, but there's no need to do that. If you're not uh, comfortable with this yet, you can still write down these two steps to make sure that you get this equation correct. 0.6 times cosine 23. Time to get our calculator, and that comes out to approximately 0.55. Remember again that I'm not rounding off to the correct number of significant figures. I'm just rounding off to what feels good. Uh, why am I ignoring significant figures? Uh, just because I, I don't feel like dealing with that issue. Uh, I'm not saying that significant figures can't be important, um, but uh, if significant figures are important to you, you'll have to learn about those someplace else. I'm just not choosing to cover that topic in these videos. Anytime you figure something out, you should build that information into your sketch. Now that we know the adjacent side, we can build that into our sketch. The adjacent side has a length of 0.55. All right, now following along with our plan, our plan was now to use the sine. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we know at this point there's actually a bunch of different ways to find the length of the opposite side, but the way it would usually be done now is to use the sine, because that's the way that relies just on the information we were originally given about the hypotenuse. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Please remember to write down the angle. Don't just say that the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. We have to say that the sine of 23 is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Now the opposite side we don't know. We were given the hypotenuse 0.6. Time for some cross multiplication. Uh, we multiplied diagonally. 1 times the opposite length is just the opposite length. 
And then the other multiplication is 0.6 times the sine of 23. Again, we reach for our calculator. 0.6 times the sine of 23 is 0.23, approximately. The opposite side has a length of 0.23. Uh, before this example, we did a couple of unusual examples where we were not given the hypotenuse, but we were instead given a leg, just for the practice. But again, the main type of problem you'll see in physics is problems where you're given the hypotenuse and you have to find the other two legs. So that's what we went back to here. You were given the hypotenuse and we had to find the other two legs. Uh, and we've seen the systematic approach for that. And again, eventually people start to get so comfortable with this that they can just skip straight to this step or this step. They know that the way to find the op uh, if you know the hypotenuse, obviously you're going to use the sine and the cosine. If you know the hypotenuse, you can use sine and cosine, not tangent, because the tangent doesn't refer to the hypotenuse. Um, you use the sine to find the opposite leg, and you use the cosine to find the adjacent leg. Um, and it turns out that the adjacent side is the hypotenuse times the cosine, and the opposite side is the hypotenuse times the sine. If you ever forget that, you can go through these two steps to figure that out again, but eventually people get comfortable enough with skipping these steps and going straight to here. By the way, in these problems, we've been figuring out everything about the triangle. We've been figuring out the other angle and all the other sides. But on many problems, you might not care about everything. You might just care about one side or one angle. So you would just figure out the stuff that you needed. So for example, on this problem, if we only cared about the adjacent side, we would just use the cosine and we wouldn't use the sine. Or if we only cared about the opposite side, we would just use the sine and we wouldn't use the cosine. In many problems, you care about both the adjacent and the opposite sides, so then you would use both of those trig functions. Notice that in this case, the adjacent um, side turned out to be vertical. Now, in most problems, the adjacent side will be horizontal, but as we've already discussed, you can't assume that. Even though usually the adjacent um, side is horizontal, you can see that it's totally possible, as in this problem, for the adjacent side to be vertical. So don't try to memorize whether the adjacent is horizontal or vertical. Just work out which side is adjacent and which side is opposite based on the details of each individual problem. If you have any trouble with that, the notational tricks that will help you are marking the angle that you're focusing on with an asterisk and actually writing down on the triangle, which are the adjacent, opposite, and hypotenuse.